everybody? So we're back on the shop with another daily vlog and guys we're working on the big old recurve chopper today. So this is what we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing the devils. We're going to do the heat treat. We might go ahead and do the temper. I don't know if we're going to do the acid etch, but if we do, awesome. Uh, if not, we'll talk about that when we're doing the outro. Guys, let's jump into this. Let's get some stuff knocked out. Let's do it. Now what I like to do here is go in at a pretty steep angle, about a 45 degree angle, and do this initial bevel all the way to the center line. Because what we're going to end up doing is just feathering it back from there. But this way we're all ready to the center line and we don't have to worry about any things that might end up happening. This lets you just kind of slowly work it back to the spine. And by it, I mean the bevels, <laughs> all the way back to the spine. And if you want to do a scandy grind or something that has a little bit shallower grind, you just go back to where you feel comfortable where it's at, maybe a quarter of the way uh, through the height of the blade or half of the way on the height of the blade. What I'm going to do on this one is three quarters of the way up the blade. And that should leave plenty of that hammered finish going from the ricasso to the top of the blade. And that's what I'm going for aesthetic wise on this particular blade itself. And if you watch my hands, this is something I want to hit on real quick. You'll see there's times when I pull the handle or the tang towards my body as I'm getting through to the tip. I've had people ask, how do you get the bevels all the way to the tip and how to make them even and things like that. Well, what you got to focus on is slowly pulling that handle towards your body as you get to the tip so that those bevels work the way all the way up to the point. Because it's going to be narrower there as you're doing the bevels. So it's just all about how you manipulate the blade as you're running it across the belt grinder. And for a drop point recurve blade, you do have to do a lot of little funky things, but a lot of that comes in practice and just taking your time and having the patience to slowly work it and not try and grind all the still off as fast as possible. Whenever you get in a hurry, when you're trying to do these particular processes, it messes you up because you get antsy or you think, oh, I can do a shortcut here. There's not many shortcuts in doing this. You just have to grind it. You got to take your time, especially if you're wanting to do it this way without a bevel jig. You need to take your time, pay attention to your blade, check it often so you're not accidentally going too far. And then, like I said, just make sure you're feathering it. So what I mean by that is as we're bringing the bevel up the blade itself, we're just doing that by putting some pressure towards the spine as we're running it, running it across. And as we put more pressure, the further that bevel will go up the blade. Hopefully that helps y'all out if y'all have questions about how to get your bevel smooth and even. A lot of it is just make sure you have a good, comfortable grip on the knife itself. Make sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing as you're rocking the blade out and just go as smooth as possible. And if there's times when you can just move your body and not so much your arms, it'll be a little bit easier because if you're trying to do all of this with just your arms, see how that's super smooth right there. And a lot of that was me moving my whole body with it side to side as opposed to just sliding my arms back and forth because as you slide your arms back and forth, you're having to act against the grinding of the steel and your hands will wobble a little bit. But if you just keep it stationary with your arms locked and move your body a little bit, you have a lot more control over what you're doing. And that first belt was a 40 grit ceramic. The one we're working on right now is a 100 grit ceramic. And now we're going to go to the medium scotch Pratt belt. And we're just going to get a lot more of the, the grind marks out of it, the scratches. 
And if you've seen other videos that I do, you know that I like to get up to a finish about like this before I go to heat treat because it makes everything else after heat treat a lot easier. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna heat treat the knife. I did do two normalizing cycles and heat treat. We're gonna go ahead and quench it in peanut oil that is warmed to 120 degrees. I'm gonna need a bigger quench tank for knives like this. And it's definitely hard, as you can hear here. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna use a 320 grit ceramic belt, and we're gonna get all of that decarb and scale from heat treat off of there, because we are gonna be acid etching this knife. And we want a good finish on the blade prior to acid etching. Now you'll see on some of the blades that I do, I like to keep that on there so whenever it acid etches, or the decarb and everything on there, I like to keep that on there so when it acid etches, it leaves that pattern on there because it will acid etch into the little cavities and crevices. And then you can go back with the scotch Brite belt and you can take a lot of the decarb and everything off of it, but you still have the cool pattern left afterwards. But for this one, I want it to be really smooth, so we get a good finish on it with that 320 grit belt. And now we're going to use the fine scotch Brite belt. And this is going to finish out the finish that we want on the blade going into the acid edge. And I am running it across the whole entire knife at this point the blade itself, the handle tank, everything, I ran it across all of that. Between that and acid etching, we do want to go ahead and etch in our maker's mark. If you do this after the acid etch, a lot of the times it leaves a weird little discoloration where the maker's mark was. So we have that on there. Now we're going to go ahead and go into just a quick temper, and by quick, I mean two cycles at 375 degrees for an hour long each. And I'm gonna need a larger acid tank as well because this doesn't let the whole entire knife fit in there. Um, but we do wanna go ahead, and my process for doing this is we do two soaks, uh, both of them being 15 minutes each. We do the first one and it gets a good etch on it. Then we clean that off with soap and water and then we go back in and we do another etch and that will actually make it a lot darker than if you just do one. But you'll get to see it at the end when we're doing the outro. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's daily vlog and check this out. We got that awesome acid etch on there. We've got our maker's mark right there. What do y'all think about that with the acid etched? I think that is absolutely sweet looking. Man, this is going to turn out to be one of my coolest knives yet. Definitely huge, massive chopper, but love the way this is looking. Guys, tell me what y'all think about it. And hopefully this video helped y'all out with me again going through my like thought process for things that I do. I know that we've done a bunch of knives so far and we've done a bunch of different processes and things like that, but I'm hoping that as we continue to progress through this, there's just things that y'all pick up and go, okay, cool. I was trying to figure this out in other bills that I was doing and me being able to see it in action and have somebody explain it to me, that made it so much easier for me to be able to go ahead and move my project to the next step because that's what I want these to be able to do. I want them to be able to help you progress your own projects into the next steps or the next phases 
so that you can do that with confidence and you're not having to second guess as much. So, you know, most of the time whenever I do things on the channel that I haven't done before and that I'm trying to figure out, okay, do I want to do it this way? Do I want to do it that way? I just say screw it and just go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's the, the easiest way that I can, I wasn't meaning for that to rhyme, screw it and go ahead and do it type thing. But guys, the, the point behind this is don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid for something to not work out right because the cool thing is everything that you do is an experience, whether it's a failure, whether it's a success, all of those things are going to help you move your skill to the next level. You know, let's say you harden a blade, you accidentally drop it on the ground and it cracks, breaks into pieces, all those different things. That's still a learning process. You know, you can look at your grain structure and see how you did with uh, your heat treat process. There, there's so many ways that you can learn from accidents and learn from failures and learn from mistakes that it's absolutely awesome. You should never be afraid to go ahead and just say, again, screw it. Let's do it. Let's just get it done. That's what I do on almost every single build. And it either works out or it doesn't work out. And luckily, I've had a whole lot of success with things that I've done. But guys, it's all about just trying it. And hopefully y'all do that. Hopefully y'all get good takeaways from my videos and y'all just push yourself forward and just try it. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for checking this out. If you would, give this video a thumbs up. It looks like a really big thumb. Uh, share this video or a video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, hit that subscribe button right there. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified when we do the next step to this. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me and checking this out. That is awesome. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time.